Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, guys, this is for you. It's go time. It's game time. Time to pay attention if you are single. I'm not saying that I'm trying to set you up with her. I'm saying that she is... <laughs> And a, an amazing relationship coach, a dating expert, and can help you move forward in, in your goal of finding somebody maybe special. Tamara's back with us from True Connection. Welcome back. How are you doing today? Hi. Great to be here. Really excited about this topic. Yeah. So we're going to talk about conscious dating. And you told me this seconds before we started. Got to be honest, I'm not really sure what that is. I'm really not. Yeah. Well, people aren't really talking about it. I haven't yet found another dating coach talking about this. And really, it can once you embrace the concept, it can save you months, if not years of time. I mean, we've all been in relationships where we stayed too long because we believed in their potential or we loved them. We were madly in love. And so we just thought, oh, we can work this out or I can work through this deal breaker. And then, of course, that never materializes. So we've all learned the hard lesson. We just didn't know what to do with the information. I'm going to press the pause button right there before we even get into this topic, because you spark something. And I'm going to throw it to you and I'm going to throw it to me. You go first. What's the lesson you've learned? The biggest lesson in relationships? What's the one that stands above all? Love isn't enough. It doesn't make a relationship sustainable. So we grew up with all the fairy tales thinking that, you know, when you fall in love, it's time to get married. And that will equal, you know, a magical, long-term, lovely relationship. And that's just not the case. And unfortunately, you don't have to date very long to realize that's not true. And it just crushes your dreams. And then you don't know how to decide then, do I, I love them. How do I know if I sh we should stay together and if we can make it? Honestly, that was going to be my next question. How do you know? It is really, well, and you need to consciously date. And then this carries you right into the relationship. This is a practice that you will always have until you decide you do want to settle down, commit, marry. Um, it, yeah, it's something you've got to do regularly. Yeah. If I were to answer the, the question I just posed to you, it would probably be, and this is, you know, long-term, certainly long-term, short-term relationships everybody reveals himself in the beginning they're telling you what you need to know mm -hmm. and it, yes. you know, a lot of times we don't pay attention to that because we're just caught up in the moments and we're just so happy and and it could even be the first time you met and right they revealed something they said something right. it may seem not important at the time but i, I feel you, you need it needs to be on your radar because mm -hmm. People are showing you who they are. They they want you to yes. know who they are. And if you buy into it, all right, great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you could go, yeah. you know, two decades and not even realize it and then go back to the beginning. It's like, oh, yes, what? that was there. Yes. I didn't yes. I saw it. Maybe I chose not to see it. I heard it. Didn't think it was a big deal. Um, so you just mm -hmm. let us in the conscious dating. What is that? Yeah. Conscious dating is taking yourself out of the fairy tale, you find somebody that you're crazy about, you have great chemistry with, and that you just really feel a special connection with. And then you start to date and you start to fall in love. And then you're <gasps> caught up in the, the lust, the connection, the fairy tale. And sometimes you have a really powerful connection. I don't know if that's happened to you yet, but there's a handful of people in your life that you are just going to like they say in the movies, you touch someone's hand and you feel it and you just feel so drawn and so, and it's just your subconscious drawn to their subconscious. Mm -hmm. That's, that is, that, that is actually true. That's not just a cliche or a movie line, but okay. conscious dating means I'm going to, I say, rec I recommend every two weeks, I'm going to sit down with my lists and look at those. Does she have any of my deal breakers? Does she, how are we doing on my needs list? So that's the first thing you've got to do. You've got to make a needs list and a deal breakers list. And you're going to look at those after your first, second, and third date. And then obviously you still want to go out. So then every two weeks revisit those, you're going to take yourself out of the fairy tale, sit down at the table with your handwritten lists and really consider those and take yourself out of that delicious scrumptious fog that you're just so, you're just so in love with yourself when you feel like that, right? Um, but you've just got to step out just for 10 minutes, 
And that's how you catch it. And that's how years don't pass. Because mm. if she's got a deal breaker, by definition, it's over. Well, the uh, situation I described was me. And things were revealed in the beginning and I overlooked them. And they were tiny, mm -hmm. but they were definitely, they resurfaced later and I should have paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, and like yeah. you said, you know, the, the subconscious touching the subconscious, I feel that was there. It definitely was there, but there was a lot of other things there that weren't revealed. Well, yes, they were. I didn't pay attention to them. Um, okay. What if, what if you're consciously dating somebody mm -hmm. and you you have your your checklist could be you know could be a physical checklist mm -hmm. doesn't hurt um yeah and just about everything is is yeah that's good that's good that's good mm -hmm. i don't want to say deal breaker i want to say that's a challenge at the moment mm -hmm. that's a challenge and that doesn't mean yeah. challenges can't be overcome doesn't mean that person can't right. overcome their challenges but what about right. if you have a couple there um how do you how do you process that mm -hmm. how do you move around that I think it really comes down to knowing what your needs are, because we all have different ones and different deal breakers, depending on where we're at in our life, our age, you know, if you have children, your location, your just your goals, your career plans. I think you've got to know your own gifts and your own weaknesses and what you can tolerate and not tolerate. And your subconscious is going to tell you that, right? It's going to, you're going to get triggered. You're going to get, you know, really upset or just struggle with it. And, you know, like if you have poor communication skills, for instance, you can talk to a coach or a therapist about that. And that's a skill that you can learn. Sure. It's just that the difference is if the person sitting there with you is saying, I don't want to work on that. They storm out of the house. They walk out of the room. There's yelling there. You have to just offer them the option if they choose not to participate with you and learning that and becoming more connected in that way. I mean, you really can't go forward from there when someone doesn't, when people present themselves, just like you said, you have to believe them. And isn't it interesting that so many of us don't leave relationships? There's many different, yeah. you know, yes. to be invested in it, uh, the house, the kids, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, mm -hmm. uh, because we don't feel strong enough. We don't feel mm -hmm. we can do it. And it's known Dating, once you go back out there, is completely unknown. I think a lot of, for a lot of people, it's time invested. And even though it's not what you want it to be, it's still comfortable. And so it's really hard to, it, it just takes a long time for people to step out. So conscious dating, when you're sitting and you're looking, I made this deal breaker list. And this is half to halves. This is not, I wish she golfed. You know, this, these are really critical things that you, these are half to halves. Yep. If she has one, I don't care if you want to rip her clothes off. She's gorgeous. You just can't wait to see her again. It's not sustainable. And, and the truth is you want to treasure your own time and respect hers too. You know, when you're doing conscious dating that it's not going to last. So why would you keep dating her? Because you're hurting her then. She's getting closer and closer to you. You're getting more and more connected to her. Then it's harder to let go. And in the meantime, you're not doing other things you or seeing other women that maybe could be a better match for you. Mm, exactly. Where you you're focused here energetically, you can't receive mm -hmm. somebody else. Um, right. I find even talking to friends, uh, a lot of guys like to have, and this is for the guys. So, you know, <laughs> tra transparency, guys, let's go admit it. Um, guys like to have women floating out there. Mm -hmm. Knowing that they're they're the guy is on their radar, even if they're mm -hmm. like three or whatever, um, it's an ego boost, whatever it might be. But a lot of guys do that. A lot of guys do that. Yeah. Yeah. For you, let's say you you got out of a long term relationship. You started dating. Where did you realize that what you really wanted soon after that? After you went through, you know, the long-term relationship is one thing, but when mm -hmm. you start dating, now you start meeting different, lots of different personalities, lots of different people. Right. And did you, did you come to a point where you realize like, yeah, all right, that's, that's, I know what I want. I'm closer to knowing what I want. And then you finally mm -hmm. get there. Is that, did that, the evolution of that yeah. dating happen to you? That, well, that's the beauty of every relationship. You learn more and more about how 
you are what you need. What is a priority for you? So your 25 year old deal breaker list is going to be different than your 45 year old deal breaker list. Right. And that's why you really have to sit down and think on this. So you're not walking into a date 20 years later with that viewfinder on <laughs> or going through, you know, your online dating and swiping, you know, left on women that really could have been something great for you. I mean, had a lot of potential. So you've just, you know, got to take that extra time. And the exciting thing is you build every time that you get out of a relationship. So it's hard to date someone that just came out of a relationship. If you've already grown and are conscious dating and you've done a lot of healing, because they don't know yet. I mean, that's the excitement after you get out yeah. of a relationship is rediscovering who am I now? What do I need now? I probably want to casually date for a while and just to be certain about what I really want and need. And then then you just get more in the mindset of, you know, this is, it'd be nice to have someone. <laughs> oh, totally. And we I mean, yeah. if, if I were to write down my checklist, what are the things I'm, I would say? It's somebody to share experiences with, to do mm -hmm. things together, to have fun. And right. if it gets, turns into something serious. And let's be honest, you're not going to waste your time unless it's somebody that has the potential for that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's a friend. That's what they call a friend. Right. And, right. But, but you have that eye on that person. Um, and it's just that sharing life together, doing fun mm -hmm. things, sharing yourselves. But you're totally right. If somebody's fresh out of a relationship, the other person has been out for a year or two, whatever, um, mm -hmm. they're there, you've moved on. You're in a totally different mm -hmm. place. It's it's right. almost it's almost hard to to mesh the two together. Right. Well, it's usually uh I don't want to say impossible because nothing's impossible, but it's just a lot longer, harder road. You're just not coming from the same place. You don't have the same intentions. Yeah. I think what confuses people is that if you're a naturally monogamous person, but you just came out of a relationship, you know, you need to casually date, but you're not wired that way. So you're just kind of in the land of confusion there. Like I, I only want to talk to one woman because that's really who I am or that's what I can handle or that's what I have time for. But yet you do need to go out and have these experiences. So I think that really is just difficult to navigate for some people. And now I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> Having been there, done that, you know, dating three, whatever, maybe four or five, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, now stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop. <all. laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's where I'm at. You know, but it, it takes time mm -hmm. to realize that, you know, on mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's got a different journey. Sometimes our journeys are very similar in terms of, you know, how we how we learn. But like you said, every relationship mm -hmm. is a stepping stone to being closer to really realizing what you want, consciously realizing what you want. Right. Right. So every two weeks, once you find someone you like, sit down and really just take yourself out of the romantic list for a minute and really think, are you two on the right track? Are you, you know, going the same direction? Do you, does she have any deal breakers? Is she meeting your needs? And that will get you out of so many relationships so much faster. And then you're taking all those steps to what you really want so much faster. And I'm not saying to give up easily on people, but sure. it makes you sit down and really look at the red flags. Like you said, that are presenting themselves what does this mean? Or was it a bad day or what, you know, cause you don't want to be super judgmental. Somebody had a bad day and then you're like, we're done. <laughs> uh, and so, but there's that huge gray area right there where you're just, was it a bad day? Is this really who she is? Like, yeah, that's really murky ground. Mm. Well, I can say you know, going back when I first started dating, um, I would just go on a date. Yeah. What I, I think she's nice. What right? about I just go, I was open to it. Now mm -hmm. I'm more on the, you know, the Tamara true connection, uh, conscious dating plan where I'm not writing it down should, but I already know, like I see it right mm -hmm. away. It's like, a, yeah. I'm not wasting my time. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just not my time. Mm -hmm. The other person's time, uh, you know, not that right. it, it's a big expense involved, but I used to, in the beginning, like go out to dinner, like yeah. pay for a yeah. dinner. Cause I'm, that's the kind of guy I am. But after a while, it's like, you know, not, this is not making sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but after a while you realize like, no, no, it's gotta, it's gotta feel really right to invest the time mm -hmm. into it. And I guess that's more of yeah. you realizing yourself, the value of yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. 
and your time, her time, the kind of experience that you want to have and share and conscious dating, because if after you've done the exercise, you're yeah. looking at everyone's profiles differently, you are asking different questions. And those, so this can save you from even going out on a date or even getting on the phone call. So you're messaging to learn some of the things that you want to learn, then you're getting on the phone and then you're going out. And through all those steps, you know, you're realizing consciously, how is this going? Is this someone that I should even go out on a first date with? And if you're meeting someone in person, that's a completely different sure. bag, right? Like you're going to rediscover all these things together and on the telephone and it's a, you know, slightly different mm -hmm. process, but it is the same that you are looking for these qualities and you are, you know, want a relationship that looks like this. And, you know, this isn't getting, it, it's just, we really have to be careful about getting over particular about what's on our deal breaker list. I mean, well, okay. So that, that is, it shouldn't be on there. Hair color shouldn't be on there. She needs to live in this exact neighborhood. I mean, that's just getting fussy. And you're really going to, you're just hurting yourself because you're going to deny yourself a lot of really, really amazing women. And I've learned to even spot it in, the, we've talked about profiles before a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it, you know, for me, everybody's different. Um, but I've read somewhere, it's like, you're, you're very attractive. Uh, there's a lot of things there, but even reading the profile where this person has some healing to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Say. Um, I don't want this or this or this or this. <laughs> yeah, it's all negative. <laughs> pretty much yeah. so. Pretty much so. And yeah. and you know, fair enough if somebody says, I, you know, I'm I'm looking for somebody that's um over five ten and has tattoos and facial hair. That's who I am. You know, I like a rugged. I like a rugged dude. What? A, okay, that's fine. This, that's mm -hmm. your preference, and you put it there, and you know, that's great. Not really me. Um, uh, but yeah. aside from that, sometimes it's like deeper details about the wants or who that person is. And you, you know, mm -hmm. you, you learn to spot it like, yep, that doesn't support me. Well, I'm going to move, move on to the next one. Um, right. Right. Just dating. Well, and I think you brought this up last time too, that blank profiles or one photo too. Um, well, first of all, their child could have put it up there for them. Right. Or their friend. I never think that might... you're right, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it might not, I, yeah, they might not even know what's up there, but that just to me says, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, I'm not ready to devote time and energy to this. And so, you know, you really do, if you are sincerely looking for someone, please, you do need to fill those out because it's a red flag. If they're blank, one photo, all your photos have shades, glasses, you're in a dark setting. <laughs> That's just spooky. <laughs> I'll even tell you there was a profile and probably had about seven pictures and I would say six, five had sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. Like one's okay. One's okay. Yeah. Like yeah. Past that. Uh, and then, then you find the people that, um, you know, they'll put their, their name, you know, sometimes you don't put your name up, uh, which is fine. Just, you know, you want to be a little uh, confidential, but when it, when it says just looking or, <laughs> right. like, come on what do you expect to get like, right right someone else that's just, just shopping that <laughs> you know what yeah you, that's exactly <laughs> right you put out there what you're you put out what you're going to get and that's what it is somebody says when right. so right. on the conscious dating any other any other thoughts any other tips with that and, and i totally agree with you don't make it so confining you know hair color mm -hmm. I, all of that mm -hmm. sure right well, and I think this is a simple concept, but it's something that so few people people are doing. And this really can be life-changing, really just sitting down and taking the time. This is your life we're talking about. And if you have children, this is your children's lives. And this is can impact your career. I mean, everything is impacted by a relationship. So if you are staying with someone when they have deal breakers, you are hurting everyone around you, not just you. So try to take yourself out of the because even if you have that like mad crazy love like it's a real pull like sometimes there's just that humongous pull that you just have to be with someone I still want you to do this that pull doesn't mean anything I've had probably three really really strong pulls in my life they didn't work out you just have to sit through them and noodle through the process in the same way 
because it doesn't mean they're meant to be together. It just means that your subconscious, your subconsciouses are trying to fill each other in. And with those matches, it's really a perfect fit of your needs you're trying to have fulfilled by the other person and vice versa. And of course, our subconscious mind is driving the bus 95% plus of the time. So you've got to manage that, that dude. <laughs> you, have to, you need to take over the bus once in a while. Do you think, or you mentioned three, where look like, if, you know, this could be mm -hmm. it, each one of them. Mm -hmm. Did you have a slight gut feeling that maybe not, but there's a lot of good here. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. what, Absolutely. What, did, you, did you really? I always did. Mm. That it's just that mystical pull that you only have a few times in your life is so powerful. You think this is it. This is my person. This is my soulmate. Yeah. And you do get really like your mind goes right to the soulmate category. We're so connected. We really understand each other. We really, yes, because you're filling each other's needs, but that doesn't mean that that's healthy or sustainable or something that you actually want. But those are the people that, bam, they're engaged in 30 days because they really feel so certain that they found their person. Mm. And so without conscious dating, I mean, you can get, you, you might end up married like three, four, five times. <laughs> so I just want to save everyone that trouble and yeah. make sure that you do take note of all the red flags and all the messages you got earlier that you thought, oh, I don't know. That doesn't suit me. That doesn't fit me. That's a little scary. That's unhealthy. We're not in the same place. You got the messages. Just make sure that you're really receiving them. Let's go back to the subconscious for a second. <clears throat> so, you know, our subconscious, you have two people. Here's our subconscious. Mm -hmm. And you say they complement each other. So is one person subconscious looking for something and they find it in the other? And then that, mm -hmm. now they have that connection. Um, which could be yes. fantastic. It may not be everything that they're looking for, but there's a lot, there's a lot there more than let's say other connections. Mm -hmm. have had. Is that how it really works with the subconscious? But it's, it's a lot of times driven out of pain. So I have daddy issues, you have mommy issues, and now we're both in mutual pain together because that's not appropriate. That's wildly unhealthy to expect your partner to fill your parents' issues and what you didn't have in your upbringing and try to fill the voids that you have in your relationship with them now. That's all personal healing. and But that's why they feel like home. That's why it feels so comforting. That's why it feels like a really close connection that you, you just, you can't let go. You feel like you can't let go. Of course you can. But that's where conscious dating comes in is you can just pry that apart a little bit and go, okay, what's on my lists and then mm. go forward from there. Yeah. You've got to take yourself out of it. That really is, we're seeking to heal, but that's not the responsibility of our partner. Then we get into codependency and we get into a lot of other really what you just said is so clear. And so that, that, that is the most important thing. I think we've ever talked about ring the tomorrow bell right there. Mm -hmm. Bing. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Because if you it haven't is. healed, that's what you're going to get. And I'll share, we have a minute left, but I know somebody um, who did and does just what you you said and uh, mm -hmm. got out of a relationship. Her father left the family when she was very young and didn't have a relationship with her father until probably in her 30s. And now she's in her upper 40s and would bounce between different guys very quickly like mm -hmm. you know maybe the rest of us a little more selective mm -hmm. would just meet another meet another meet another wound up with a guy who looks just mm -hmm. like her father spitting yeah. it unbelievable yeah. same wow. same uh ethnic background same hobbies same everything wow and just trying to fill that void trying to fill that void and uh, doesn't realize it, but you know, there you go. Right, Just right. It's all subconscious. She doesn't. She's doing it. Yeah, yeah, it is, and so that's why we have to really take that five percent that we have and try to make a full use of that five percent that we have, where we live consciously and really make sure. Because until she starts to heal, that relationship is going to be living out of an unhealthy back and forth where they're just trying to, you know, 
heal make with it, each other. Make it work. We're trying to make it work. Yeah. And right. just what you said, maybe, you know, the guy has mom issues. And just what you said was fantastic. How that just kind of that all all the pieces that were missing that they didn't heal from. And it's just an example came together, right. but it's not a real solid relationship. It's just, you know, right. it, it's probably not, you know, uh, a strong lasting one. Uh, right. I'm glad. Right. We talked yeah. About this. yeah. I really am. Yeah, isn't it? I just, it's just critical. And of all the things, like when I'm on a TED Talk, this is going to be the topic. I mean, this is just life changing. It's critical. And I really, my mission is about getting people into long term relationships that are sustainable, that make it to commitment. I mean, that's what my clients are after. So I really want to, you know, if we need to look at your online profile and talk before and after every day, we can do that or we can dive deep. I just want to save people the trauma of, three years of wasted time. You've built a house, you got married. Like I just, you know, want to help people realize their person in a different way. So they really end up with somebody that's good for them. I'm going to ask you one question, kind of personal. Mm -hmm. um, is that your mission? And I love your mission. It's spot on. Mm -hmm. Everybody should know it. Is it based out of your experience? Absolutely it is. Yes. Trump. Exactly what I just said. Times hurting four kids times three years. To, yes. And that will be the beginning of my TED talk is my, <laughs> my trauma story. <laughs> if you ever need any help with it, I'm here to offer oh, whatever. Um, because I have to tell you, you know, in our talks, um, you know, we talked about dating apps and, and dating in general and all that, which is all great. Um, but getting deeper into it showed me a another side of you and what you do and how it is so important that is more important than your profile and all of that. Yes, it is. Because it if really you're is. not ready over here, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. don't bother with the profile. Don't bother making that mm -hmm. perfect. Don't get the perfect picture, excellent selfie, whatever, because yeah. you're just, you're, you're, you're asking for trouble. You're asking mm -hmm. um, for, for disappointment down the road because you, you haven't, figured yourself out yet right yeah. right exactly this should be the pilot right this is the bus driver conscious mm -hmm. dating can really well and it's and this, this saves you from heartache too right trauma heartache heartbreak and for her too uh -huh. right she she's likely not conscious dating because so very few people are so that means that between the two of you, you're going to keep going on because you love each other. Then you don't want to give up because it's been so long and you, <laughs> your children are connected and you have all these traditions and memories. And, you know, so, yeah, it's fabulous, but you still don't belong together. <laughs> and so you have to just save each other the the agony. Right. I mean, once you realize it, you can end it and save you and her so much more heartbreak. Yeah, what you said it was f funny in a sad way. You know, it's all fantastic, but you still don't belong with each other. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> true. True. Uh, love our talk. Sad but true. How, how do, yes. How do we find you? How do we connect with you? You can find me on Instagram at Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, True Connection, or my website is trueconnection.coach, C-O-A-C-H. Yeah. Yes, would love to chat with you about how to get your dating life on track and how to consciously date. Save yeah. you one thousands of dollars too, right? By the time you <laughs> right? if, if I did the math in the beginning, what I spent on dinners at nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. Can't right. even <laughs> can't even you right. Know, oh goodness. But you know what? Yeah. That was an investment in myself. Right. Look at it that way, right. you know, and, and for everybody yeah. else, you know, that's where you learn. That's how you learn. Um fantastic talking with you gotta say it yeah thanks steve so great to be here again yeah and uh look forward next time and even in the beginning when you said we're going to talk about conscious dating i'm going to be honest i'm like what's that going to be this year, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that yeah. was called but it's so important yeah. so uh yeah for anybody looking yeah. to guys come on <laughs> be honest. this will save this concept will save your life it's simple but life-changing it, it it sounds simple but it is life-changing thank you so much mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me, Steve. Talk to you next week. Yep, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.